This is a 19th century Rand McNally map that I found over on davidrumsey.com. It's absolutely beautiful. One of my favorite features of this map is if you zoom into the coastal borders here, you can see these wave-like elements radiating from the coastline. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to show you how you can recreate this look inside of Adobe After Effects, and I'm also going to show you how we can create a looping animation for these waves. As always, all the project files are available over on my Patreon page. If you want to learn more about GeoLayers 3, check out my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass. Links in the video description. For the first step, I need to find a map. So I'm over here at freevectormaps.com, and I'm going to search for a nice island. And I'm going to pick Cuba. So down here, I have Cuba. I'm going to grab a single color, and you can download it right here. Uh, there are two options on freevectormaps.com. You could download it. If you don't want to apply the attribution, you need to pay a little license fee, which is very, very small, $3. So once you download that, you're going to see there's a bunch of different file formats available here. I'm going to grab the Adobe Illustrator file. I'm going to drop that directly into Adobe After Effects, and I'm going to select Choose Layer. You have all these separate layers here, and I'm going to go ahead and just grab Cuba, click OK, now we have this. You can see it's a very, very small resolution size here, which is fine because this is a vector file. So I'm going to grab this and bring it into my composition here. This is Ultra HD 4K resolution, my comp here. So I'm going to scale this up, something about here. And to make those edges crispy crisp, I need to hit this little button here, continuously rasterize. So now we have a proper vector here. But I want to turn this into a shape layer. The quickest way to do that simply grab the layer here, go to layer, and then select create, create shapes from vector layers. The reason I want to create a shape out of this is so I can easily add fill and stroke elements and use all of the shape tools available in, in Adobe After Effects. So now I'll go grab the AI file. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'll just rename this Cuba. So I'm going to create these waves via simple stroke shapes, and I want each individual wave or line to be on its own separate layer. So for that, I'm going to grab this Cuba layer, duplicate it, and I'll call the duplicate wave. I'll change the label color to keep things easy to follow. And now I'm going to lock the Cuba layer, turn off the visibility. So with the wave layer selected, now I want to switch this to a stroke. So right now it's just a solid fill with no stroke. You can see that reflected up here. To turn off the fill, click on the, fill, the word fill, and then click on this button right here, which is none. And there's actually no stroke on here right now. So to add the stroke, you just go to Add Stroke. And that places a stroke. And it actually places it, let me full screen this, it places it inside of the shape group, which has a bunch of different paths. So to make things easier to work with, grab that stroke and bring it outside of the shape group here. And make sure you place it underneath the shape group. And that's going to make things much easier to work with. Now, if we zoom in here, you can see that the stroke is quite nasty and jagged. We've got these sharp edges. So open up the shape group here, go to line join, and switch that to round. And also, this is looking pretty thick. I want it to be quite thin. So I'm going to go to stroke width and set that to 0.5. So the way this is going to work is I want to create a 10 second animation and I want it to be looping. So by the time it hits the 10 second mark, I want it to seamlessly loop here. So as I'm keyframing the attributes and creating this animation, I need to make sure that everything is divisible by 10. So I'm going to go grab the work area. I'm going to set my playhead at the 10 second mark perfectly. I'm going to hit the keyboard shortcut N to make sure my work area is set from 0 to 10. The way that we'll animate this is I'm going to animate just a few parameters of our wave, including, um, I think it's three main parameters. We're going to animate the stroke width, we're going to animate an offset paths animator, and we'll probably do an opacity animation as well. So first let's animate opacity. So I'm going to hit T to bring up opacity. So to make this divisible by 10, what we're going to do is all of our animations are going to keyframe from 0 to 5 seconds. The three attributes or parameters that I animate, all of the starting keyframes are going to start at 0, and then all the end keyframes are going to end at 5. And it's very important that we have keyframes on both of those time points because we're going to loop it. And once we loop it, those keyframes need to be aligned perfectly. So I'm going to go add, I'm going to go to the 5 second mark, make sure I'm right on it, and add a marker just for reference. So this is where my keyframes are going to end. So now I will add a start opacity keyframe here. And since that's 100, let's drag it out a little bit. We want it to start 
with nothing. So we want it to kind of like fade up. Okay, I don't think we want it to fade back out. So we can just add another 100 keyframe here. And, there, and once again, the reason we're gonna add the keyframe here is because we're gonna add a loop out expression. So now I'm gonna hold Alt, click here and type in loop. And then I'm gonna select loop out. And what that's gonna do is it's going to loop these keyframes. So it's always, when it hits here, it's always gonna go back here and then fade this up. Now we don't wanna animate the opacity out, at least I don't think I do, because I'm going to be animating the stroke width and the stroke width is gonna go down to zero. So it's basically like dissolving it out anyways. So now let's go over to stroke width. I'm gonna to go to contents. So if you, if you wanna avoid diving down here, you can just grab the layer and type in width and then you can find the stroke width right here. And then you can hit S twice just to solo this particular parameter. So for stroke width, it will be 0.5. It'll stay 0.5 until the end, which then it will animate down to zero. So if we watch this, it's just fading up to this standard uh, stroke width, and then it goes out. So we have two animations now. We have it fading in, and then we have it fade out. So now to actually have it radiate out, we want to add an offset path. So I'm gonna go grab a wave again. We're gonna click on add and let's add offset paths. That adds this new parameter here and you're gonna see it offset the paths but it also once again makes it look all jagged. So open up offset paths. Once you add this, it really slows down the system. So just be aware of that, that past this point, it's gonna be a little intensive on your, your system here. So we once again need to go down to the line join parameter of offset paths, switch that to round. Okay, so you can see that it has an amount of 10. So we want to animate the offset paths amount. I'm going to grab amount and I'm going to hit S twice to solo this. This can be a simple enough animation. Just grab your end keyframe here, which is 10. Make sure you snap it to the marker here so that it loops perfectly. And we're going to go back here and let's do zero. And now let's watch our animation here. All right, so that's what we've got now. And what is really cool about this is if you look up close, you can see these paths are merging together as they radiate out. It's a beautiful. And if you look back at the Rand McNally map, those are merging as well as they intersect. All right, now I'm gonna turn the country layer back on and we can now see we have this wave animating out, looks great and it dissolves out. However, it's not looping. So now all we need to do is copy that loop expression. So to see all the keyframes of everything on this layer, just hit the U key twice, and it's gonna show you we have these three parameters here. And this one's red, and this is because we applied that loop expression to here, it says loop out. We need to go ahead and do that to all of these. So I'm gonna alt click this one here, and we'll go ahead and type in loop out, and go ahead and do the same thing on this one, loop out. Okay, and once again, it's very important to see that all these keyframes are perfectly aligned because if the loop is off for any of these, I'm sorry, if the keyframes are misaligned for any of these, it's gonna throw the loop off. Now we simply need to duplicate it and offset it. So I wanna grab this wave, and this is pretty processor or system intensive, so I recommend that you turn these layers off because my system's pretty good and it's really bogging it down as I do this. So I'm gonna turn off this one, and in fact, I'm gonna turn off this one too. And now I'm gonna duplicate it until I have five waves. And the reason I'm doing five is because five is divisible by 10. When I offset these, it's gonna make it a little bit easier. So if I grab all of these, in fact, if I'm, I'm gonna grab, yeah, I'm gonna grab all of these waves and I wanna put a marker on the actual layer as well so we can see once we offset these layers, we'll be able to see where the animations are taking place. So go to layer and then go to markers add marker and that will add those markers here. Okay, so if you hit U, you can see all of these keyframes are lined up here. Now we simply need to offset these. So offsetting can be a little tedious if you're just gonna you know, stagger these one at a time. I actually use a tool called Mobar. There's a ton of different tools you can use. This is a premium third-party plugin. However, if you're doing this manually, what you wanna do is you want to stagger these by about two seconds because we have five layers and if you stagger them by two seconds that equals 10 which uh, we're going to move these so what i'm going to do is stagger these by two seconds so 
I go over here to layer, I say offset layers, and I've already set this to two seconds. So this offset value is in frames. This sequence is at 24 frames per second. 48 frames is exactly two seconds. And I stagger these by ascending. It doesn't actually doesn't really matter how you stagger them, but I'll do it by ascending. And that staggers them like this. So if you don't have this uh, third party plugin, what you're gonna do is you're gonna like basically manually move each layer by two seconds. You need to make sure that these are right on too. So you go to the two second mark here, and then you would essentially place this one right here. A quick way to do this is to use the bracket keys. So if you move your playhead and you hit left bracket, it's gonna put it right where the playhead is. So if you bring your playhead right to the two second mark, which is right here. Um, another way to do this is you can just type in two, se two seconds. It's gonna bring your playhead right there, grab that layer, hit left bracket, it's gonna perfectly align it. So now these are properly offset. However, we don't want them to be like this because when we render these out, they're gonna, you know, we want them to all be up at the same time. So to have these all up at the same time, I need to grab them all and drag them this way. And we want everything to start as all the lines are up. So I'm gonna, basically this last marker, we want to be at the beginning. So I'm gonna drag my playhead to the beginning and then just make sure that this marker is right at the playhead here. And for the final step here, we wanna make sure that our layers extend out because these are looping, so we want them to loop out. So to trim these or, or basically have them go all to the end here, you can hold the Alt key and then hit right bracket and that extends these out. Make sure you hold Alt though because if you just hit right bracket, it's gonna offset these again and that's not good. All right, so if I turn all these, I'm gonna save because it's gonna bog down my system here. I'm gonna turn everything back on, and now we should see all these waves up at the same time, which is indeed what we can see now. Okay, so now I have an animation here with my waves. They're looping properly. Now we're gonna add some final touches. For example, I'm gonna go back and tweak the animation here for both stroke width and for opacity because these waves are looking a little bit too uniform. The width is just too uniform between all of them. I want a little bit more fall off here. So this is really, you know, trial and error. Keep tweaking until you get something that you like. All right, that's looking great. Now as a very last step here, I'm gonna add this texture that I found over at Envato Elements. And I'm gonna switch this to a multiply blend mode. And then I'm gonna change all my strokes to a darker color here as well as my fill. Now let's have a look at this. Big shout out to my tier three patrons, Tyson the Keymaster, Mike and Sandra over on YouTube at Flimmy Plus One, Ryan, Josh, and Alex. Thank you all so much for making this video possible.